Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Ooch, and today we have something that I'm introducing to you guys for reals. And it's something that's different, and I am going to try my best to do some more episodes for this series that I'm bringing to you guys called Real Talk. Now, Real Talk is pretty much still in the standard kind of review form where I talk about anything. It might be a topic, it might be an anime, it might be a show, a game. And I give you guys my complete real talk in the sense that I might be more blunt than I normally would be. Not to say that any of my other and previous review content is fake, but everything that I've always been doing on this channel has been of pure realness and me just being me. So today we're talking about My Hero Wants Justice. Now, why am I picking this game or why am I picking this topic first and foremost to start off this series? Well, with the horizon of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and the fact that I know myself and I know that I've been hyped for this game ever since its incarnation within its just the announcement of it earlier this year, I knew that once this game dropped that it's gonna be very difficult for me to find time to play anything else. And because of that fact, I know that when it comes to other fighting games, being that Smash is obviously a fighting game, that all my attention and hard work, and especially when I'm trying to get good at something, is gonna go towards Smash Ultimate. And a game like My Hero Wants Justice, being that it is the only legitimate fighting game that we have right now for any of the major consoles like Xbox One, PS4, and Nintendo Switch, it really brings me to an unfortunate conclusion about this game and that it's really not as good as I thought it was supposed to be. Now being that, like I said, it is the only My Hero Academia game that we kind of have right now outside of any of the Japanese mobile games. And I think they do have one on the 3DS as well. I think that they had something going for them really well. And then once you get more into it and you realize that, man, this just isn't it, Chief. Then it kind of hits you and you're just like, wow, this actually sucks now the game has its moments and obviously has some things that players can have some enjoyment out of for example the character customization with the costumes the player profiles the fact that there is online and then there are some extra modes like the mission mode and the story mode that you guys can enjoy fully at your heart's content and with every dlc character there do they do include a mission mode for that character um so that way it adds more depth and more playtime replay value within this game but even after all that it still comes up short why simply within the gameplay and online itself now not to say arena fighters are balanced because a lot of them are very in balance just for the, the nature of these types of games. But arena fighters like One's Justice, you could kind of compare it to maybe any of the Tenkaichi Dragon Ball games or Raging Blast or even the Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm games. There's always gonna be jank. And with jank comes a lot of salt and a lot of raging and a lot of things that just make it so that way you'll basically never see it on a higher level so that more people can see it and it be can become more of a mainstream title. So in other in other words, you'll never see it at a tournament unless it's like a side event in a corner of some event that's going on. Online is probably one of the most frustrating things that I have ever come to find within a fighting game, let alone any video game. And I say that because I've actually never seen so many rage quitters in a single game ever before at once. And it's funny because in any other game, you would think, oh, like people rage quit all the time. But it's like the frequency that it happens in My Hero One's Justice is absolutely ridiculous and because of that it really just lowers the replay value because it's just like why am i doing this to myself i'm literally just trying to play a game it's not my fault that you can't get out of my freaking combo but then again there are always ways to get players to either stay getting their ass whooped or to actually accept the fact that they're gonna have to suffer some kind of penalty and it doesn't penalize the players that win and it doesn't penalize anyone for that matter and it just basically brings about more games that just get played out and everyone's happier in the long run but the fact that this game has no type of system to implement this it just really kind of makes it suck altogether because why should i even care about trying to rank up and being the best dobby on the leaderboard when every match that you play and win you only get 
10 points worth and when you lose it seems like it maybe might go up by one i don't really know how the the numerics work exactly outside of your win rate but if a player rage quits guess what you don't get anything you don't get a single thing and it's like it never even happened it doesn't even go on your record so it's just like what's the point even if it might not show up on your record, it still is time that you'll never get back. And let me tell you something. I was super excited to get this game that I went out of my way to freaking get the imported version on the Nintendo Switch. I was in Japan at the time that this game was basically like a week and a half old. And I was lucky enough that through my Twitch stream, I got a nice big donation to go ahead and buy this game. So I had early access, I had early play time, and I had time to really put into this game and how it works and how it feels and how it plays online and even for one of the few american players north american players to play this game and to have access to even playing online against other players that might have had this which is very minimal or japanese players i was surprised that i was even able to connect to a lot of them but then it was every time that i just got close to just bodying somebody or i would just get close to that win that even the japanese players which i found very surprising and shocking that this was even a thing they would quit and rage quit all the time i mean but do you blame them there's no penalty so what is there to lose literally super shocking and super upsetting and of course still looking forward to it being that i was one of the first and only people to have it on especially on my side of the country i was actively looking into getting more and more people into the game to show other my hero academia fans of the anime and manga that hey there's this cool fighting game that can go along with the series so that way when you get hype after watching an episode or reading a really good chapter then you can go ahead and whip this game out and bam you can just take it out in the game you can maybe even and relive some of the moments that happen and just like have fun with it but even after all that just realizing that every character is for the most part broken to some degree you're just like damn like like how long is this game even gonna last so of course being that guy that's just trying to get everyone hyped and ready for the north american release obviously i'm here with the playstation 4 version and i've been streaming it on my youtube channel and twitch channels very often and people are aware that yes i main dobby i'm trying to climb up in the rankings the leaderboards to try to get up to the number one spot which is most certainly not gonna happen and i'll tell you why within the ranking system and with everything that i've been saying this kind of is a good segue into how flawed this whole leaderboard and incentive and just replaying ranked online is in the first place the fact that you only really get any kind of points towards wins and you don't really get any kind of bonus points for getting like all s's or high grades like aaa or sss or saa like you don't get any kind of special types of points you only get the currency and the currency is basically just to buy items for the characters to then dress them up as but again those don't even really do anything for you they're just for the aesthetic so when you're trying to just get have a goal for yourself and say oh i'm trying to be the best at this character or i'm trying to make it this high up on the ranking leaderboard it's like you have to play perfectly and hope that your opponent doesn't quit on you because guess what if they do you wasting your time so as someone that's really trying to put in as much time and grind as i possibly can to get as far up on the leaderboard as i possibly can as of right now i am eighth best in the world at playing dobby according to the point system but outside of that if the players from japan that had it on the playstation 4 have been playing since august well then guess what you're likely to see someone with five digits in their numbers and it's really really almost impossible to even think to even say wow like i gotta like give up my whole life just to even get up to that point and i might not even do that because people will just rage quit and there's no clear penalty and it's not even like they made any kind of events or like certain times where like you might have a double xp weekend or you might have a play from this hour to this hour and you'll get bonus the points or even if you know players rage quit you'll still get credited with something but there's none of that, you know? And it's really sad because this is one of the best series ongoing right now in the anime and manga world. And the fact that it can't even have a game to companion it where like people can get all excited about the show and then come and play the video game. It's just like, dude, what the hell's the point? And going back to how I started this whole video, Smash Ultimate is on the horizon and there's plenty, plenty 
of ways to even just play the game and to enjoy it and to have loads of fun whether you're trying to take it seriously or not and this game is just like i'm literally wasting time trying to get up in a leaderboard for a personal goal where that realistically does nothing for me it's just literally so i can say yeah i got this far up on the leaderboard so it's like what just just so i could feel good about myself you know i know leaderboards don't really give you anything outside of you know street cred or like bragging rights but i would at least have it would have appreciated a lot more if there was a more calculated system so that way players that were actually trying to get somewhere would not feel like i feel and they're wasting their time aiming towards something that is completely unrealistic and the fact that bandai themselves haven't even tweeted or made any kind of post about any kind of future update because guess what right now they're only really caring about people playing naruto to boruto shinobi striker which ha, still lacks a lot of boruto characters and apparently that game got hella hacked so have fun with that one Oh yeah, and one last thing that's kind of like not neither here nor there. So it's like not really that much of a big deal. But I'm surprised that they did not have any type of season pass DLC considering how much content they already have offered up for players to purchase separately and individually. I mean, I'm a fan of just buying, of making one purchase, maybe 20 bucks and having access to all of the content as it gets released. You know, similar to Street Fighter to Tekken, even Smash Brothers is doing it. So I'm surprised that they're not not doing this with a game like one's justice because i mean after all there already are three downloadable characters which each having their own mission mode dlc packs so that to me sounds like enough content to just bundle into a season pass or some kind of battle pack if you will you know what i'm saying i mean look pokin tournament can release a battle pack with one character and two supports and then one other character with two supports and that's a wave one and wave two and one's justice you're buying everything separate. It just kind of shows me and it makes me feel like this is just one of those games that they made and just figured that they knew going into it that once it was released, that's it. They had pretty much every intention to be like, for the first like few months, we're definitely going to have DLC lined up for you guys all the way until November, which is Shoot Style Deku, Endeavor, and Dinasa. After that, like I said, they have no mention of anything happening after this. And honestly, there's really no indication of them making any kind of tweaks or adjustments because by that time, it'll probably be too late. More fighters, more battles, more fun. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, only on Nintendo Switch. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Real Talk with your boy, um, talking about My Hero Wants Justice. And like I said in previous posts, I will still be playing this, trying to get as high up as I possibly can. And honestly, I really don't think I will get past 5th place on that ranking leaderboard, considering how the gap in numbers are right now from what it looks like the North American players versus the Japanese, because the top Top five are all Japanese players and you can just tell by how many points they have sitting on their accounts. Like, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter. Let me know you guys guys thought about One's Justice in my Discord, especially on my Discord. And if you definitely want to see more content like this with, you know, real talk discussions, let me know in the comments. And if you want to support the channel even further beyond, then definitely consider becoming a patron today. And as always, guys, have yourselves a good one. Take care of yourselves. May the power protect you. And I'll see y'all next time.